Let's do some more processing or word processing with Microsoft Word. And we can look at three key things with due to referencing. And that is your footnotes, your captions, and your index. So let's start with the footnotes. First of all, what are footnotes used for? Well, footnotes are used to give the name of a person who gave a particular quote, maybe. Uh, maybe you want to give a more detailed explanation about something. Or there's an acronym or initialization and you want to say what it stands for. That can also be used for footnotes. Or you want to make comments on a particular text that's in the, the document. So you do you get footnotes and you get nothing called endnotes they're very similar but let's just have a look at what they look like so let's say i've got this text over there and i don't know what mle stands for so there you can see i've put a one a little sub little little, little note there little, little, that's basically a footnote like, hey there's a little mention of this later on and then at the bottom of the document you will then have something that looks like that where it will specify that one refers to Mr. Long Education. So now you know what that MLE stands for. Maybe there's a quote and you want to see who, wrote, who said that quote, you could do that. Now the reason why there's a number there is because sometimes you'll have multiple footnotes. So you want to refer, this is footnote one, this is footnote two, so you know, so you might have multiple comments here at the bottom um, and they can, then you know which one's referring to which one on the page. Okay, so let's go see how we can apply them to our document. So here is my document and there you can see I've got an MLE over there. Maybe I want to refer to that particular one as a footnote. So then I'm going to come here to references. So that's where we're going to click on references. And there we will see where the footnotes are. Under the footnote section, we can insert a footnote. It can literally be that easy where you go, hey, insert one, boom. It will then ask me what is the what is that referring to? What is the text that we want to refer to that? I'm going to say Mr. Long education so there we go and let's say i want another one and that what's that one so i'm going to insert another footnote over there it automatically puts a two there and we can say this is the practical assessment tasks so there i'm just doing initializations and acronyms saying what they spelled and so on so you can do something as simple as that now you can control a little bit what your um what your footnotes are going to be maybe you don't want to use numbers maybe you want to use like symbols so if you do that let's say we've got that cat over there and i want to change that one so i'm going to i'm selecting the text there and instead of inserting a footnote i'm going to go to this option over here where we can click on that little option there and we can go see at the different options available to us so let's look, we can specify if we want it at the bottom of the page. You'll notice you can also do end notes over here. An end note will be at the end of the document. That's the difference between the main difference between a footnote. So you see this footnote is at the bottom of this particular page, but end notes will be at the end of the document. And you can specify if it's just below the text or if it's going to be, if it was an end note, you can specify if it's at the end of the section or just the end of that document. If you're not too sure what a section is, go look at our video on sections. But we're going to do a footnote again. And we can, I don't want a number, I want a particular symbol. So I'm going to click here on symbol. And let's say we're going to find a symbol under wingdings. So I'm going to come all the way down to wingdings. And let's go there, wingdings. And I want a particular, so maybe I really like um, this telephone to be, or cats are subject. So let's see if we can find a computer. There we go, there's a computer. So I'm going to make a computer. So there we go. So that's it. I'm going to insert that one as my symbol. You'll notice that when you're using symbols, you can't obviously do the number format and stuff like that because obviously it's not a number symbol. So then we can insert it. And when I insert it, it'll put the little footnote at the end and I can say, hey, this is a subject in South African high schools. So there we go. So there's a little comment in there. So there I've got my footnotes done. There you can see how you can customize it. And what's nice is if I move my mouse over that text, you see it actually just highlights what that footnote is every single time I move my mouse over it. So that's basically how you can do a footnote. So go to referencing, you can insert a normal footnote, but if you want a specific one where you want to change the, the what it looks like, maybe you change a particular symbol, then click on that little part there, and then you can use that. The next section in referencing that we're going to cover today are captions. Now, captions are little labels that we can attach to certain items, like, for example, a diagram. Maybe we want to insert a little message about what that particular diagram is. So all I have to do is they put a little thing there saying, this is figure one, and this is the pyramid chart. So something like that is very useful when we are making a, for example, a caption. Now, so there you can see it's right at the bottom. You can specify where you want it on the particular image. Maybe you want it um, to the, underneath it or to the side. You can specify its positioning as well. So 
You can do one for figures if you want to. There are these options to do captions for figures. You can do one for tables. Maybe you've got a whole bunch of tables. You can do one for equations. Maybe you've got a mathematical document. Or you can specify your own label. So maybe there's a specific thing that you want to list. And maybe this, this is um, diagram one and diagram two. Maybe there's something in particular that you want to specify. So you can do that using captions. The other powerful thing about using captions is that you can actually specify a nice little table or like, like similar to our table of contents for each of those particular labels. So maybe you want a list of all the figures or the list of all the tables. Then you can actually do that. You can have a table of figures which specifies where all the figures are on which page. So that but by using captions, you can create this type of dynamic very easily for you and it will do it automatically keeping track of which pages the figures are on or which pages the tables are on and it will do it all for you automatically so over here we've got a table and i want to add a caption to it so you can select it or whatever you want to do and i'm going to come here to reference i'm already at it already and you can see there is the caption insert a caption so i'm just going to go insert a caption you can specify oh, it's really tried to identify that it's a table so this is table one because this is my first table and you can specify what it's going to be so i'm going to say hey this is i'm going to put a space uh, uh details of document so very simple I want it below the text. You can exclude the label if you want, but I want to include the label, please. Uh, and so on and so on. So you can just go, okay, boom, there we go. So it's all done. And I'm going to go further down. Oh, yeah, we have an image. So this is not a table. So I'm going to use this particular image. I'm going to go insert a caption into that one. But this is not a table. It's going to be a figure. So this is figure one. You see, I changed the numbering. And this is going to be space MLE logo. And you can, as I said, below the text, you can even change the numbering if you want to. You can say what the format is and so on. You can specify how you want it to be. Maybe you want them to be A, Bs, and Cs. So there we go. So I'm going to go like that. Go OK. And there we go. We've got a nice little caption. The if I want to, I can edit that caption. I can actually go and make it a bit uh, centered. I can even change its text. I can change the what it looks like if I want to change what it looks like. So you can do that. Maybe you want to create a style for your captions. You can do that as well. So there we go. So there's a nice little image. Let's go further down. Here's another diagram. We're going to insert another image here. Boom. Let's go insert a caption for this one. And this is going to be pyramid graph. But you can see a pyramid in the graph. So this is figure two. Automatically picked up that's figure two. And here's another table, which I'm just going to do on a new line quickly. Let's go put in a new page. Enter. So I can put it on a new page. There we go. And then over here, this table, we're going to put a caption on that one. And this is not the third figure. This is the second table. Do you see how it does it automatically? So list of topics. And there we go. So, okay. So there we go. So we've got it's nicely lined up. You can center it if you want to and so on. There we go. So there's our nice little tables going. Now the added beauty of having all of these tables labeled, all these captions, is I can come here to the end of my document somewhere. Maybe I want a list of all the tables, where they are on, uh, on the document, what page are they on. So I can just come here to insert a table of figures. And I actually want to specify all the tables and what pages they are on. You can, just like you did with the table of content, you can specify the leader. You can get a particular format if you want. All those details are over there. And I click OK. And there we go. We've got a list of all the tables. There's a table of tables, almost. So table of tables. So there's all the tables. This table is on page one. This table is on page uh, four. And so on. And we can do the exact same thing with our figures. We can insert a table of figures. We're just now going to select a different label, a different caption label. So we're going to use our figures now. And by doing that one, we maybe we want a different particular style for this one, although you should keep it consistent. And by doing that, I now have a different one, which is just the, t the figures, figure one, figure two. You see it automatically change the previous one to that particular style because they all keep them the same style. And there we go. This is my table of figures. So there we go. So if you want to include both of them, one way that you could do is create your own label. As I said, what you can do is when you are doing a particular document, maybe you want to take that particular caption away. We're going to take it away, by the way. And if you do change something, you can always just right click on your table of figures and then right click on it, just like you did with the um, table of content. And you can update the field and then you see it'll automatically remove anyone that you've taken away. 
but if I wanted one specifically, you can click on it and you can insert a caption. But in this case, you can create your own new label. So you can call this table slash figure, for example. Maybe you want your own label like that. And then you can say table slash figure one. And then you can say this is the MLE logo. And then we go, okay. And so now you've got your own particular label, which I'm going to just center. And so if you want to create a table of con or table of figures for that particular one, uh, then you would just obviously when you insert your table of figures, you would select that new label that you've just created. There we go. You can see you've got a table slash figure label now. You can just add that one to your list. And now you've got a list of those particular ones. So there we go. Those are the different options available to you. You can create your own labels and you can insert your own captions at the end of each of your tables or your figures or whatever you want to add. Our third part to this video, we're going to look at indexing. And so this is what an index looks like. You normally find them at the back of a, for example, a book or a, an encyclopedia where you specify where different words are. So you can search, it's an alphabetical list. And if you want to find, for example, access or something like that, you can go to those particular pages. So for example, if we want to look, hey, maybe the HTML Maybe the HTML. There we go. We're going to find HTML. We can see that the HTML is on page two and page four of this document. So how do we do an index? Well, there are a couple of steps that you need to take note of when you are doing that. The first step is to mark the entry. So for each of those words, you need to mark each and every individual entry. And then once you've done that, then you can actually insert your index. So first do all the marking of the words and then you can insert an index. So let's try to create an index. As I said, the first step is marking all the words. So for example, let's say we want to be able to keep track of which pages YouTube is on. And you select the word that you want to mark. And then we're going to come here to references again. And there under index, we can mark that particular entry. It's going to ask me if there's any, what is the main entry? We can have some particular ranges. If you want to only mark them on a particular range, if you want to make it bold or italic, it could be a sub entry even, but you can mark all of them. So that when you say, when I say mark all, it'll find the word YouTube throughout the document and mark all of them. Maybe you just want this particular one. So then you would just mark that one. But I'm going to mark all. I think there's only one of them. So there we go. And automatically, you'll notice when I do that, it goes into this particular, what we call show hide mode, where you can actually see what it looks like. So if we take it off, it'll just disappear. But that's also another tip. If you want to find the indexes or remove an index, then you can just select this particular option. Ah, oh, there, there's, there's something. And then you can just delete that particular index if you want to remove it from the index i'm going to undo that i want to keep it there so let's go let's go back and mark some more indexes i'm going to click on for example let's go to at the top here we've got the word online video so i want to take online video and i'm going to come here to references mark entry and this one i'm going to say c and i'm going to say this is a cross reference to say c youtube so we can do something like that and you can do that and you can mark that if you want to be example. Uh, maybe over here we want to record the word word. Say the word word. So I'm going to select word and mark entry. And I want all references to it. entry. There we go. Mark all. And let's do one more. Smart art. Let's do one more for smart art. Mark entry. Yes. Mark all of them. So I've done a couple of them. Obviously you would do a lot more. But then once we are done, I'm going to take this hide, this show hide off. Once we are done, I'm going to go right to the end of my document. I'm going to go to like almost like a brand new page. That's normally a good idea. Go to references and we are going to insert our index. Again, we've got very similar options to what we've got for table of contents. You can have leaders if you want. It depends on your templates. You can have it indented or run in. You can see like what it looks like with it running. I like it indented. You can specify how many columns you want. If you've got lots, then you can have like three columns. I should only have one. That would be ideal. But I'm going to keep two just to see what it looks like. And you can specify the different formats. Now, depending on those formats, I really like that one. But you can specify them if you want. And I'm going to write a line the numbers so the numbers are all on that side. So let's try it. Let's have a look. Go OK. Boom. And there we go. There's my table of, or my index, sorry. So there's the O words. There you can see it says see YouTube. So we can come here to YouTube. Oh, that's on page two. Uh, word, one, two, three, and four. So words on all the pages. Smart arts on one, two, and three. But there we go. So you can put a nice little heading at the top here saying index. And this is your index. So as I said, remember the steps are first go through your text and mark the different words. So if we want to mark the word Delphi, I would come here and mark that entry and say, yes, mark all of them, please. Close. And then 
you would then go to the bottom and then you would insert your index. Now this index has changed, so I'm going to update the index. And there we go, you can see Delphi has now been added to the list. You can shake the show hard off, there we go. So you can see that Delphi is on page 5. So there we go, that's how you create an index. For more videos on referencing or on Microsoft Word, go to our YouTube channel, click on the subscribe button, leave a like, leave a comment, please support the channel, and go check out our playlists. They'll find lots of topics there. And remember, don't do it the long way, do it the Mr. Long Way.